Have you seen this video of a man falsely getting arrested for DUI after blowing his 0.0? Keep going, 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 okay. Okay, so you're under arrest for DUI, so go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Are you serious? Yes, sir, I am. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Give me your other hand, right here. Welcome back to San Joaquin Audits. Today's video comes to you from David Henry. And today's video is an important lesson on why you should never answer police questions, no matter what. That's definitely some of the worst advice ever, but we'll get to that in a bit. Hello, you beautiful bastards. I'm the Triggered Blimey, and I'm covering for Irish Demon while he recovers from the Lager Lurgy. Now that his little opener is out of the way, let's continue our look at the video that he titled Cops Falsely Charge Accident Victim with DUI. Oh, and I will be playing it at a slightly fast speed so we can actually get through in a decent amount of time. I gotta let you know we're being audio and video recorded. Okay. What happened? I saw the light turn green, so I went and smacked. Were you turning left? I was going straight. Okay, so you were going this way or this way? Yeah. And where was he coming from? They were coming this way. They just came out I think. So they're going this way as you're crossing the intersection? Yes. Okay. Where did you hit them? Okay. Are you injured? Okay, you got your license and insurance on you? Yeah. Let's let's step away so they can drive. You're gonna see right here that this man unfortunately backs himself into a corner by answering this cop's questions. I can almost guarantee you that this won't be the whole story. Why can't these idiots realize that the majority of police, like the rest of us, are good? And quite frankly, most of these idiots have little to no understanding of how the law and actual police procedures work. So a couple questions, uh, Mr. Henry. Okay, where are you coming from? Uh, you are not required to talk to the police. In fact, don't. Not the best sentence structure, but whatever. Now, he's not lying when he says that you're not required to talk to the police. You are well within your rights not to answer questions. In the United States, it's the Fifth Amendment. However, once you get to the point where you're detained or arrested, even though you still have the right to remain silent, there's also that insy little thing where not mentioning something that you might later rely on in court could actually harm your defense. Now, in the Miranda rights, they don't actually mention this, so maybe that is a problem with the United States. In the UK, you're actually informed of this when you read your rights. But all in all, I think it's good to let people know, especially now that there's so many idiots like this San Joaquin online pushing their misunderstandings. Downtown? Where are downtown? I was at a... I was by the casino. Okay. Did you have a couple of drinks in the casino? I wasn't in the casino. Okay, what were you doing down there? I was... Uh, I was buying some weed, yeah, that's what I was doing. Did you smoke a little bit afterwards? No. Completely legal in Washington. You're right, it is completely legal in Washington. It is treated just like alcohol, in that you need to be 21 to purchase and use it, and you can still be charged with driving while impaired. When was the last time you smoked? Yesterday. Okay, how? I got still in the package. How much? Uh, how much I didn't smoke yesterday. Yeah. Do, you, do you usually smoke? No. So if not yesterday, when was the last time you did smoke? A year ago. Okay, so only now you're coming back to smoking? You know what? Maybe he should have kept his mouth shut. He's gone from smoking yesterday to smoking a year ago. I mean, I guess he could have just done gummies or something yesterday and, you know, got confused. Still, switching your story is definitely an alarm bell when talking to a police officer. Okay, where are you going now? Uh, home. Where's home at? Notice how odd the questions were for the officer to give to a person who's just been in a car accident. That's just your opinion, you know. Have you been trained in law enforcement? I very much doubt it. Wank. On top of that, it's not important for an officer to know where you're going or where you're coming from. It's up to him to find that out if necessary. I'd word it a little differently because the cop actually does need to know where you're coming from as part of their investigation. You know, that's something that they would like to know. For example, if the police officer believes you're intoxicated and asks this question and you answer, I was at the bar, then you've basically confirmed his suspicions immediately. But as far as you're concerned, yes, you are protected under the Fifth Amendment and you do not have to answer the questions. But again, sometimes this can backfire. And if you've done nothing wrong, it probably doesn't matter you. You, you said you had a green light? Yeah, I saw a green light. And I could have been going more than 5, 10 miles an hour. Okay. And just smashed. I got hit hard. Like, that was fast. You said you saw a green light and you just you went ahead and... Yeah, I pushed the gas pedal so I moved forward. I didn't slam it to the floor or anything. Okay. Yeah. 
Would you like to do some voluntary tests? I want to make sure you're okay to drive. Never do these tests. You're not required to. That is correct. They are voluntary. However, if the police officer suspects that you are intoxicated and that you are a danger to others, you can still be arrested. My advice, if you're sober, don't try to be a sobsit and just do the fucking tests. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You want to yeah, throw that back in there? It was at this moment he knew he was taking me to jail. Not necessarily, but sarcasm noted, you twat. Put this in my car real quick. What's in your car? Okay, put this in my car. I'll just have the fire fire hold on to it real quick, if you don't mind, sir. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I was so confident. <laughs> I was so confident in my ability to pass these tests <laughs> that I decided to be cooperative. <laughs> Kind of like how you fraud it as a so confident in your understanding of the law that you frequently break it and get arrested. Let's just be clear. None of these fraud it pricks have actually practiced law. They read some shit, watch some videos and thought, you know what? I have the same level of legal acumen as this bloke. I should audit the police. Fuck me running. These tossers need to get a bleeding clue. Yeah, don't worry. So a couple questions. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the tip of this pen here? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> You're going to stand with your feet together, hands at your sides, okay? I'm going to move this tip of the pen left to right, up and down. I want you to keep your head perfectly still and follow this with your eyes only. Do you understand? Okay. Cool. <laughs> My camera went. Oh. Oh. Good times. <laughs> Not. I said, are you hurting? He's like, what are you hurting? So if you had it's like, what's the pain? Are you done? <laughs> I'd say it's more, but I yeah. Notice how this female officer put her hand around the camera and said this. I'd say it's more, but I yeah. The shady tactic of avoiding transparency is all too common amongst modern day police. So because she doesn't want to say more about whatever they were talking about, honestly, I couldn't make it all out. Uh, you instantly talk about police refusing to be transparent. What a bellend. They could have been having a conversation about another case, their private lives, whatever. Just like most people, they can often talk about things that occur outside of the workplace while on the job. It's a normal thing, it happens. So there could be any number of reasons that she doesn't want to expand at that time while the body cams on. Your distrust of the police just leads you to assume that everything they do must be evil. Stop being a plank and sort yourself out, Mush. I'm going to show you this video which actually shows the driver is at fault, but it still does not legally prove that the driver was under the influence, and that's important to keep in mind. Except that you don't show the whole clip. No worries though, I'll do it for you. So, as you said, he ran a red light, and as you said, it does not legally prove he was under the influence. However, him saying that he saw the green light, as well as changes in one of his answers, having to think about where he was headed, and some other things that we'll get to, is enough to give the officer reasonable suspicion, in my opinion. Now, we're going to skip the rest of the sobriety test, because, you know, you don't really get to see it all clearly. We're just going to jump straight to the breathalyzer. Okay, sir. Sir, sir, just take a deep breath in, and exhale through the stoop like you're blowing up a balloon, okay? David, David, Edward. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, okay. Okay, so Sam Joaquin has put on the screen that, you know, it was 0, 0.000, which is obviously a pass. However, we will find out later that this is irrelevant. Okay, so you're on the rest for DUI, so go and put your hands behind your back. Are you serious? Yes, sir, I am. Go and put your hands behind your back. Give me the other hand, right here. What I It doesn't matter, just put your hands behind your back. Don't resist, put your other hand behind your back. All right, my friend, let's go in the back of the car. Let's go on the other side. Drunk at all. You don't have to be drunk to be a DUI. So right here, the police officer has even explained that you don't need to be drunk. This makes it clear that he's not arresting him based on the breathalyzer result. It's pretty easy to realize, at least for the majority of us, they do the breathalyzer as part of their investigation to see if alcohol is a factor. That's all. Obviously, if you blow past a certain legal limit, they know that you've had way too much. I just wish these idiots would stop trying to make shit up and paint the police in a bad light. Because again, for the majority, they are good. Yes, there are bad cops out there. Yes, they need to be held to account. And there are plenty of auditors out there that are doing it the right way. It's just when you cross an auditor with a sovereign citizen, you get frauded up and fuck what they say. Just because there's some bad cops, it doesn't make all cops bad. I'm not high either. Well, you that's, that's your opinion, my friend. It's a fact. Okay. <laughs>
What are you, a medical professional? He doesn't need to be a medical professional. Police are trained on what to look for. Sure, a lot of it comes down to personal interpretation. They are human after all. Overall, they are pretty good at it. In this case, I wouldn't be surprised if they're taking him in to take a urine or blood sample. There is also the fact that he was in an accident. Now, he says he's fine. Obviously, if he was concussed, you know, maybe it could make him look like he's under the influence. But this is stuff that, you know, would be difficult to determine. But again, the police just have to basically work to the best their ability and the information they've gathered. No, you're not. Yeah, my friend. Was... Where's my cell phone and stuff? Where's that? I'll get it. Yeah, it? Hey, free America! Free America! He does sound a little bit like a sovereign citizen here, doesn't he? In conclusion, the officer secured a warrant, and David was sent immediately to the hospital to get a blood test. The test actually proved that David wasn't under the influence of any alcohol or narcotics. The prosecutor had no choice but to dismiss the case. This is why I don't answer police questions, and I definitely don't submit to any field sobriety tests. And this is why I don't take legal advice from frauders, although it's important to know that you do not have to answer questions. And indeed, in some situations, I would advise against it. The sobriety test is voluntary, etc. But at the end of the day, it depends on your situation. And personally, I think that, if, especially if you've got nothing to hide, you should just cooperate with police. I have found it personally that things go a lot smoother. I can't tell you to do the same. You use your best judgment. Just know that these officers are not your friend, and any question they ask you isn't to get to know you. The advice I can give you is to always film your police interactions. It's very important. I actually agree with this. It is never a bad idea to record when you're being stopped by the police. But one thing that can make your life easier is just don't break the law. And whatever you do, do not become a frauder. Now, the gentleman in the video actually uploaded a video, so we're just going to have a quick look at that. It's just a freeze frame shot of part of the police report that he shows. So, looking at this, we see there was a witness that saw Mr. Henry run a red light. Mr. Henry admitted to visiting a marijuana store. Although this doesn't prove he is impaired, it certainly raises the possibility. The police officer did not observe clues on the HGN. HGN stands for Horizontal Gaze Nystagmus. Uh, nystagmus generally refers to any sort of bouncing or jerking of the eye. So this is basically saying that when the officer is doing uh, performing the visual part of the sobriety test, horizontal gaze nystagmus was not observably exaggerated, as it is by alcohol consumption and the use of certain illicit or prescription drugs, usually depressants. The reason that these things can cause eye jerking to become exaggerated when looking to the side is because of their effect on the nervous system. Lastly, we see that the breathalyzer result was 0 0.000, but as we read further, we see the police officer determined this to be inconsistent with the impairment he observed. Personally, I think the cop went by the book on this one. Save yourself the trouble. Don't break the law. And it's not always about your rights. That about wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to flood the comment section to let Demon know just how much you prefer me. No, but seriously, I'm sure he would love wishes telling him to get better and all that good stuff. Also, maybe consider swinging by my channel, which he bloody better have linked in the description. I've been the Triggered Limey, and I'll catch you beautiful bastards on the next one. I want to be the best in the game, invest in my name, check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain, I ingest, I retain, assess and I change, possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money, clown.